Hey guys, welcome back. So Kirby, in five words or less, tell me what is your investment strategy? All right, now you got me working here. Uh, five words or less. All right, I'm gonna try to count them out. All right, make cash flow number one priority. <laughs> That's like six. <laughs> Cash, nah, I, cash flow is one word, right? Or is that two words? That's <laughs> two words. It's okay. It's okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> I, all right. All right. No, I, I try to put cash flow together as one word. All right. Uh, be we'll cash flow dependent. Be cash flow dependent. There we go. Okay. We use that. Okay. 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 Cool. Cool. Mine was, uh, I was going to say, long term cash flowing assets. Okay, okay, all okay, right, all right. Okay. Look at you. That's a private that's a private school education right there, y'all. So now y'all know the difference. Yeah, that's all private between the two. Yeah. Yeah, that's there you go. But yeah, I mean mine is mine is uh very and and I think ours is pretty pretty similar. The strategy is no matter what you're investing in, I mean you can even go crypto, uh, but make make cash flow as a priority. I mean, even if you invest in the stocks that don't pay a dividend. You can still make cash flow from selling cover calls. You can sell cash secure puts in the stock market. You can buy stocks the dividend route, you know, when real estate. Uh, I always say it, and even some real estate agents that I have to talk to on the seller side, they're still surprised when I say the property has to cash flow for me day one. I mean, I know it's a lot of investors out there or people that's thinking they're investors. They play the appreciation game. For me, appreciation is a byproduct. That's extra. That's a bonus. Because if I if I don't have the cash flow, and then you know, as Michael Zuber called him, I have alligator properties where it's cash flow negative, and I'm I'm having to pay out of pocket to make sure these people so you know make sure these people can still rent because the rent's not coming in covering you know all the you know things that we look for as far as rent, insurance, property taxes, property management uh vacancies and maintenance and i'm having to come out of pocket to pay for it i might not get to appreciation because it might be so many compounded things that that come up that i might lose the property in the foreclosure before i can even get to that appreciation part so whenever i look at any asset no matter if it's buying a business it has to cash flow for me day one i mean i might have to get you know fancy with the terms maybe do seller finance and this is in business also or work the numbers but I have to be in a cash flow positive position. I can't be in a position that I'm sitting here, I'm cash flow negative and I'm having to, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul, meaning take money from one bank account to fund another bank account so this thing can go and then hopefully in the future one day that it'll be cash flow positive or profitable. So that's just my biggest strategy there because as long as the properties, the assets and everything is cash flowing, because I always say this, bills are due every month. That's it. So I need cash flow to coming in that's positive that can keep keep everything afloat. And then especially in real estate, because I mean, Alex, you know now the rent, the rent payment alone, you need a couple rent payments to pay for a roof, an AC unit, to put in new flooring. It's not just what well, one rent payment can pay for all of this stuff. So if I'm at a cash flow negative position, then I'm really digging deep into my pockets trying to and it sounds crazy, but I'm digging deep in my pockets. So somebody else can live, I'm paying for somebody else to live at a location and it makes no sense. So that's, that's the most paramount thing to me, no matter what investments I'm doing and what realm or what sector or what I got my hand dove into. Yeah, I agree. Um, 100% with that. I mean, cash flow is definitely the way that I, uh, strategize. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if people want to make flips you know quick flips if they want to have some some type of uh i guess you could say active income source right i know there's you know what is it that five percent of successful uh stock traders if you know obviously they're successful at what they do but i think it's important to deploy profits into cash flowing assets that can be you know the work is done up front and then those assets are set aside managed by somebody else and the income just comes in 
um, because especially speaking in terms of generational wealth if you are planning on changing your family tree if you're the only one that knows how to trade stocks or flip houses or sell e-commerce then when you die you know does your family have enough money to sustain themselves you know it's better to leave them a portfolio of cash flowing assets than you know just a pile of cash because then that's not really going to create any kind of generational wealth um that's the way yeah, I view Alec. yeah 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 no you're right i got one for you and this is one people don't look at and it's it's funny we never talked about this and it just it just hit my brain right when you was talking is even my job has to be cash flow positive so if if i have a job and let's say it's making me thirty thousand dollars a year my lifestyle better be at $25,000 a year. It has to be a cash. It, everything has to be cash flow. I, I always need extra than what an expense is. So that's something that that's how people should start off. Their life should be the first cash flowing quote unquote asset that you have. It should be the job that you work at. And the only way you can make it cash flow positive and a lot of people make it negative because of course lifestyle creep. And everything else and lifestyle inflation that's when it i uh, saw you say on the video and i like that one lifestyle inflation they they are at a just with their job their cash flow negative you know they digging into the credit cards they going to the personal loan to pay their loans and everything else just to live and then they want to beat their chest on social media talking about i got a job no you <laughs> no you the liability yourself <laughs> you are the liability yourself <laughs> So that's that's another you know aspect that people don't think of, but that's the first place where you need to be cash flow positive, so you can have the extra capital to have the extra capital to go into investments, to have the extra capital to go into real estate, to buy businesses, stack cash to do other things with. So if you can't figure that out in your personal life, you might as well don't even think about the other aspects because that's where it's at. And I see a lot of people saying, "Oh, I can get out of this. I can get out of this debt if I start investing." No. You got to figure out how at the genesis of it, and that's your income. Maybe you need to get more income and don't raise your level of life to the income, the new income that you're getting. But if you can't figure out how to manage your own personal funds, then cash flow and assets, that's that's the thing that you shouldn't even worry about. At first, start at home. Yeah, absolutely. With all that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.